So, hello friends. So, I'll be just giving a brief overview on uh, differential hypoxemia in VA ECMO. So, recently we had a 39 year old gentleman who came with uh, cardiac arrest, recurrent cardiac arrest. So, we did a eCPR and put him on a VA ECMO. And we had to go to the hybrid version of uh, putting him on VAV ECMO because of differential hypoxemia. So I'll just give you a brief overview and try to simplify as to what really happens during the differential hypoxemia. Uh, so I wish to acknowledge my colleague, Dr. Pratibha, who is an ECMO fellow, who contributed quite a bit for, to this case uh, and adding value to the case that we handled. So, and there will be a small video also we'll show you as to how we converted VA ECMO to hybrid at the end of this presentation. So just for all our ICU trainees, and I'm sure this can be asked as a question for all our DRNB trainees, so it's good to have a clarity. So when we talk about VA ECMO, so as most of you would, would be working in ECMO centers would know, so there is a blood that is drawn from the venous circulation. From here, it is passed through the ECMO pump, and then it is returned through the arterial cannula retrograde into the femoral artery and into the iota. So this is the flow mechanics that typically happens in uh, VA ECMO. So when we talk about differential hypoxemia, so one thing we need to understand is this happens when heart is recovering. So obviously this patient, 39 year old, he came with cardiac arrest, we did a eCPR and put him on VA ECMO. So initially we wouldn't have differential hypoxemia. When the heart started starts recovering, and when it starts ejecting blood and when lung is dysfunctional. So that is a key aspect. So where the lung is not normalized because of pulmonary edema, ARDS, or for whatever reasons, lung is dysfunctional. And then the heart is resuming its function. There is a deoxygenated blood that is being ejected. And that is when you have a, a mixing cloud that happens between the pure oxygenated blood that is uh, flowing retrograde from the ECMO and the innate function of the heart, which is ejecting deoxygenated blood. Uh, so the deoxygenated blood that is being ejected from the heart because of dysfunctional lung, where the pulmonary function is not normal, is the native circulation. And the pure oxygenated blood that is coming from the ECMO pump, which is passing retrograde, which is being pushed retrograde through the femoral artery, iliac artery, and the iota is an ECMO circulation. So this is something we need to understand. And these two join somewhere in between, and we call it as a mixing cloud, where your deoxygenated blood or the pure, uh, the blue blood is mixing with the red blood or deoxygenated mixing with the purely oxygenated blood. So and the location of this mixing cloud is a reflection of intrinsic cardiac function. How well your cardiac is functioning, is dependent on where the mixing is happening. So if the heart is just about recovering, you will have this mixing cloud at a very proximal, maybe at the arch of iota or even prior to that. So when the heart functioning is improving and it is beating against the retrograde flow, then you'll have this mixing cloud slowly being pushed more distally. So that is when you will see coming to the descending iota and maybe lower down as and when heart function improves. And that is when your differential hypoxemia sets in. So differential hypoxemia for all the trainees, it happens in VA ECMO with a recovering cardiac function. So our 39 year old, when we put him on VA ECMO, initially we didn't have it, but once the heart function completely resumed and obviously his lung also was bad, that is when the differential hypoxemia sets in. So how do we diagnose? We The diagnosis of differential hypoxemia happens by taking the blood gas at the radial artery because the reason why we take from the right, it has to be from the right radial artery or somewhere in the right upper limb is because the blood, when heart is resuming its function, the blood first gets ejected from the arch of iota through the innominate artery and that sort of comes through the radial artery and that is why that is a reflection where hypoxemia. So you have to compare that with another distal like a femoral artery blood sample. So you would see a difference in the oxygen levels and that is how we diagnose and we call it as Harlequin syndrome. And the sort of occurrence rate of this is around 8.8% is what has been referenced. So just to again, simplistically show in a schematic way. So this is how the heart looks and where your heart function is not normal, where heart has stopped functioning or dysfunctional. So obviously you put them on a VA ECMO. So as I said, the blood is drawn from the VA, goes through the ECMO pump and it gets super oxygenated. 
this oxygenated blood is pushed retrograde into the femoral artery, iliac artery and into the aorta. And when the lungs are normal, so obviously the pure oxygenated blood goes through the pulmonary veins and it comes into the LV and that gets it. So there is no differential height. So this is a typical VA ECMO where lungs are pristine. Lungs are absolutely normal. So you do not have differential hypoxia because there is pure blood coming from the lungs. So I'll keep using the word pure blood and the, or the oxygenated blood. And there is a super oxygenated blood going from the ECMO machine. So there's no differential hypoxia. So when do differential hypoxia? So when you have this situation where heart is not functioning, lungs are normal. So you'll have a super oxygenated red blood going everywhere in the body and you do not have differential hypoxemia. But look at this picture. So look at this picture where pure oxygenated blood is circulating all through the body. There is no differential hypoxia. So what happens in differential? So here you see the heart is recovering, which means heart has started pumping. So that's why you have this blue blood coming, which is deoxygenated blood. And you have a dysfunctional lung. You have an ARDS lung or you have a lung flooded with pulmonary edema for whatever reason or aspiration or pneumonia, so on and so forth. So the lung is dysfunctional. So the oxygenated, super oxygenated blood or oxygenated blood is not coming through the pulmonary veins. So it's a blue blood that is coming. So just for rough sense. So there's a deoxygenated blood going through the pulmonary veins and that enters into the LV and that is being ejected by the recovering heart. And that is when you have this mixing cloud that tends to happen when differential hypoxemia sets in. And the differential hypoxemia, where it happens, the mixing cloud is really dependent on LV function. If LV, as I said, is completely dysfunctional, then the mixing cloud will happen somewhere in the proximal at the arch of aorta. But when LV is beating nicely, then the mixing cloud will move distally towards your descending aorta. Or it is also dependent on the degree of ECMO support. Because if your ECMO uh, sort of flows are at a high flow rates, then obviously it will keep pushing the ECMO, uh, the mixing cloud, little upward. So the, the mixing cloud is pretty much dependent on your innate myocardial function, how it is improving, and the level of ECMO support and the flow rates that you may have set. So as I said, if uh, LV is purely dysfunctional, then the mixing cloud moves more proximally towards the arch of aorta and so on and so forth. But when the heart is fully functioning, the mixing cloud will move more digitally. So this is this is what our understanding has to be. And obviously, when there is differential hypoxemia, so your blood, your brain also suffers hypoxemia because you would have more deoxygenated blood going to the brain also because of all the arteries, carotids, and others which emerge from the aortic heart. So that, that is the problem we have with differential hypoxemia. And we need to address this. We cannot say, okay, we are happy that the ECMO is happening well and differential how the differential hypoxemia can cause hypoxic brain injury and we have to be cognizant because all the major vessels that eject out from the arch goes to the brain and as you see the brain is not oxygenated the previous slide you saw the brain was fully oxygenated so we want something like this but if you have something like this where brain gets deoxygenated blood so they develop severe brain hypoxemia which is a major problem in ECMO so just imagine these pictures I think it will be easy for you to conceptually understand what really happens. So differential hypoxemia typically happens where heart function is recovering, but the lung is completely dysfunctional and it is not pushing the oxygenated blood through the pulmonary veins into the LV. That is when the whole deoxygenated blood is getting mixed with the ECMO blood, which is super oxygenated. And you have this mixing cloud that forms, which is an interface between the deoxygenated blood and the oxygenated blood. So if you understand this conceptually, even in exams, if they ask, I would suggest to all our DRNB trainees to put it pictorially to make it very clear that you are able, you have understood the concept well. Again, to show pictorially, so if you have an improving ventricular contractility, as you say, the mixing cloud from proximal, this is proximal end, it keeps moving to the midway and more to the distally. And then you may have to reduce your ECMO blood flows as well because your heart function has improved and they may not need VA ECMO. So again, to show pictorially, so when cardiac function is absolutely zero, then VA ECMO works perfect. You have oxygenated blood going everywhere. But if cardiac function starts resuming and lung has not recovered the way you would have expected, that is when differential hypoxemia, and this is a bad situation where it starts affecting other organs because of hypoxemic blood being jetted out from the major vessels coming out of the aorta. So th this is what you need to understand. So what is the solution? So if you have this differential, so we had, 39 year old, we put him on VA ECMO, we had differential hypoxemia, which our ECMO fellow recognized uh, very promptly. 
So what did what do we what are the options we have? What is the solution? So you have this situation. Solution is obviously uh, the theoretical solution is you have to reduce your innate myocardial function, but that's not our intent. We cannot reduce our innate myocardial function and get it to rest. We cannot do that. So one thing you can do is you can increase your ECMO flows and try to push more retrograde so that you push uh, the deoxygenated blood back into it. So this is also not an ideal sort of, it's a temporizing measure, you could try that. Most important for intensives, you have to improve the lung function. So you have to improve the primary problem. If someone is flooding the lungs, due to some regurgitant lesion, they may need an angio, you may have to do angiogram, you may have to use diuretics, you may have to use preload, afterload, myocardial contractility, all that, or ARDS, optimize PEEP, if it is ARDS, give antibiotics, give steroids or whatever. So you have to basically fix the lung. If all these are not the practical solution, then you have to move to hybrid. That's what we did for this patient. You have to look at VAV ECMO or the hybrid ECMO. So what is VAV ECMO? We'll just show you a video also how we did for this. Or you had to think of central, rather than having the cannula in the femoral for which we had, you had to go central cannulation. Either you have to put axillary or aortic or subclavian. So you had to go more proximal. So these are the solutions. For this patient, we had to resort to VAV ECMO. Okay, so uh, obviously, as I said, the solutions are improving the oxygenated blood from ECMO. So VAV ECMO is where you have a, uh, you, as you see pictorially, so you have a uh, venous blood going into the bum. From the pump, the oxygenated blood is diverted to the femoral artery and then back into the right IJV. Uh, so that is what we call as venous arteriovenous ECMO. So again, this is a easier to understand for you figuratively. So what we do is we put a white cannula uh, at the femoral artery. So there is one flow which goes into the femoral artery. As you see from here, you have put a Y cannula. So the return cannula, it's going to the femoral artery and part of the blood is being redirected into the right IJV. So we put a big uh, uh, ECMO cannula into the IJV and pass it on to circumvent and mitigate the differential hypoxemia that is set in. So the big question is how do we modulate the flow between the femoral artery? How much we pass in the femoral artery and how much we pass into the right IJV? We, so in India, as of now, we are all putting a clamp, but there are certain special clamps like this that you get where I'm told that you can modulate the flow. But right now it is an approximation. So half of the blood is tried to be pushed into the uh, femoral artery and half of it is being pushed into the uh, venous cannula through the IJV. Uh, so we are doing it by putting it a clamp like this you see in the picture. But now you have pumps which can... Uh, determine the type of flows, whether we want 70% flow into the vein or 25% into the femoral artery or 50-50. So I hear we have pumps, so we, but we haven't started using this. So we have to see whether these pumps become more commercially viable and available. So this is the concept of VAV ECMO because we are mitigating the deoxygenated blood problem by pushing it super oxygenated blood into the venous circulation so that we mitigate this differential hypoxemia. So I'll just take you to the three minutes video that we did the VAV ECMO. As you see, uh, so as you see, there is a our ECMO fellow who is putting a right IJE uh, um, ECMO cannula, and this is the femoral cannula where a Y connector is connected. As you see, there is a Y connector. You should see. You can see that that's a Y connector. So there will be one which will go to the femoral artery. There will be one which will go into the internal jugular vein. So that's the Y connector, friends, as you see. So just taking the air out. So you can see this is the IJV uh, cannula, ECMO cannula that is put in. So the Y connector, there is one connection going into the femoral artery. Superoxygenated blood is going to the femoral artery and the same blood, 50% of the blood is being directed into the right IJV as you see. So this is the hybrid ECMO. So as you see, this is a, from the Y connector, the tubing is taken and connected to the internal jugular vein. So the superoxygenated blood flows into the I. IJV ECMO cannula. So as you see, it's being connected.
Okay. So you can see, friends, the blood will flow from, from the Y connector into the IJD circulation. So you can see that Y connector, one is flowing into the femoral artery and the other one is flowing into the right IJD. So you can see that nice wide Y connector. You can see that Y connector there. So one is going to the femoral artery and one is going into the IJD. Two, this is to mitigate the differential hypoxemia. You can see that Y connector. You can see that Y connector, friends. Mm -hmm. so you can see that Y connector. One is going to the femoral artery, one is going into the right IJD. Can see the flow nicely going to the IJD. Okay, so now having done that hybrid ECMO, so now the question is how do we wean? So and how do we go about weaning? So obviously we need to have some algorithm. So once you have recognized that uh, there is a Harlequin on VA ECMO, then as you saw in the video, we convert them into VAV ECMO, which is a hybrid ECMO. After that we have to assess cardiac function. Like our patient, heart was not functional at all. Then we kept on assessing serially our cardiac function and his LV function had improved around 45%. So these are the criteria. So RV should be good. There should not be distension. Minimal TR should be there. And make sure that uh, CVP is less than 15 centimeter and pulmonary artery pressures are not very high, less than 50. Most importantly, your, your microcirculation lactate should be less than 2. If they fulfill this criteria and you see the heart nicely beating and LV function has improved, then you have to reduce the femoral artery flow rate by 10% and you have to reassess every 12th hourly. And once you ascertain that your cardiac function has normalized, which in our case had normalized to at least 45%, then you have to stop VECMO and direct all the flow into the venous circulation and slowly reduce your femoral arterial flow and change it to VV ECMO. And that's what we did for this patient. We stopped the VA ECMO and convert it to VV ECMO to make sure and ensure that the lungs improve. And after that, make sure that after this, you have to obviously look at the hemodynamics and make sure your microcirculations are good. If that is good, so then you have to reduce the ECMO glass flow to 10% and then again reassess every 12th hourly. And if saturations are improving and it's more than 95% with FiO2 of ECMO at around 21%, you know lungs have improved and then you can look at ECMO weaning permanently. So this is the sort of algorithm or a flow chart that you can have in mind. If you have a patient who has gone from VA to hybrid ECMO, how to wean off the hybrid component and from VAV, you have to move to the VV ECMO. And obviously when the lung function improves, you have to wean off the ECMO. So this is just a conceptual sort of a overview on what happens in sort of a ECPR or a VA ECMO when there is a differential hypoxemia. So, so, so that's about it, folks. So I request all our esteemed listeners to attend our signature conference, JIX, that's happening in October 18th to 20th in Nama Bengaluru. So I request all our esteemed listeners to submit your valuable work to our journal, Journal of Acute Care, which comes out every three months. And visit my website to rehear to this lecture. So thank you, friends. Thank you, one and all.